What you're about to witness is an idiot. A resident idiot who set about making his 92nd episode of a show beloved by few and despised by many more, only to find out in post there was an interloper present. An intruder who didn't make its presence known until well after the show was shot. Let's see what happens when this QR code enters the YouTube zone. Welcome back to the Director's Garage. I am your host and resident idiot, Michael. Now, first of all, comment below if you know Elsinore Castle and the Elsinore Beer logo. Let me know your stories because this is an obscure reference even for me. I saw the shirt and I went, I don't think anybody's going to get this, but I, I'm throwing it out there just for fun. Now, today I do have a treat, which is just in line with Elsinore Beer. We're looking at a headphone that super impressed me during that What's in the Box episode, and that is the Hi Fi Man Arya Stealth Magnet Edition. Now, these things are priced, I'm so stupid. These things are priced at just $1,600. And I gotta pause for a second because there was a time not too long ago when $1,600 for a headphone would make you hyperventilate. And justifiably so. To be fair, this is a shit ton of money for a headphone. And yet it's a mid-tier offering in 2022. But I remember when Sennheiser first dropped the HD 800 on us at 1600 bucks and everyone was in shock. Who's going to pay that kind of money? And now it's like, eh, it's just $1,600. It's perspectives of the $6,000 offerings from both Hi-Fi Man and Abyss now. They make this headphone seem like a relative bargain. The Hi-Fi Man Arya comes to us from... Audio 46, get with the program. <laughs> Audio 46 is my favorite place to get all things headphone related. They are your personal audio superstore and they just keep getting better. Every time I log on, they have some new brand deal going on. They even carry Moondrop IEMs now. It wasn't so long ago that you had to import Moondrops from Asia. Now you can get them delivered fast and free through Audio 46. Check out the new Canera Balder 2.0. That's an IEM I have my eye on, considering how much I love the Nana 2.0. And here's the best part. If you use the affiliate link below and enter the coupon code Director's Garage, all one word at checkout, you can knock an extra 5% off most of the items they stock. And they are the very best folks in the business to deal with. And I'm stoked that Audio 46 sent us the Arya Stealth Magnet Edition. Are there really hidden stealthy forces at play in here? Really? Well, today we're going to put this headphone up against Hi-Fi Man's own Sisfara as I talk about its sound and features. Will the lion eat its young or will the strong survive? It's like we're doing the Lion King here. <laughs> Right? Get out. Now, the interesting thing about this shootout is that I found things that I preferred on the Aria and the Sisfara, uh, depending on what I was listening to. So, this is a great problem to have because it says there are things I prefer about a headphone that costs four times less than its sibling. And it made for some terrific listening doing the research for this episode. First up, let's talk ergonomics because that's what I always do. <laughs> We're 92 episodes in. You think I'm going to start changing it now? <laughs> okay. Uh, both of these headphones are really comfortable and they're relatively light. The one thing I would note is that on the Sisfara, the ear cups are not as deep as on the Aria. And my outer, my ears will touch this outer pad right here. It's not, it doesn't hurt or anything and it doesn't annoy me. I'm just aware that the headphones on my head. So you should note that. The Aria by comparison has a deeper cup and they don't touch my ear at all when I put them on. So that's an edge in comfort for the Aria Stealth. But when it comes to construction, the edge goes to the Sisfara and here's why. You see these grill, these ribs right here? They're ever so slightly rounded. In woodworking, we call this camphoring. You just put a little camphor on the edge so that there's a there's a finish to them. They don't feel sharp. 
on the Aria Stealth Magnet, these ribs are very sharp and they'll catch your finger when you're running across it. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point I wasn't brushing around and I came across them and they draw blood. Ouch. That's how sharp these edges are. And a headphone really, really shouldn't ever draw blood. <laughs> I know we suffer for our art, but come on. All right. Now, neither of these headphones come with a very good cable and they could both benefit from an upgraded one like this one I have here for the Sisfara. But in general, the ergonomic scores are pretty high on these. They're really nice packages. So we're going to start breaking down sound properties and I'm going to start with dynamics. <laughs> now, I'm starting with this category because if you think the Aria Stealth Magnet Edition is going to get its clock cleaned against the Sisfara, think again. It has stronger dynamics. That loud and soft, loud to soft, surprise me, slamming bass, then go quiet. Despite having the speed advantage on the Sisfara, which we'll talk about in a bit, the Aria Stealth Magnet offers greater surprises. The Sisfara has a more even approach, smoothing over those bursts of sound a bit more. And there's better bass slam on the Aria. So it's an Aria Stealth win for dynamics. Next up is detail, and this is an area where the Sisfara shows its dominance over the Aria. Things just sound crisper. I was listening to the new Adele album, and the leading edge of Adele's voice has greater clarity. Those little breaks in her voice are sharper. The piano hammer on the string feels more immediate to my ears. You get a better sense that Adele is in the room singing to you. Almost like there's a level of magnification into the sound. I'm pulling more information out of the music on the Sisfara. Even the snap on percussion is more vibrant. On the song To Be Loved, there's a piano run at the beginning of the song, and the notes just have tremendous definition on the Sisfara. You can hear the room more vividly in the decay, too. There's just more information coming across, but I don't know that it's four times as much information if you look at the price. Now, imaging was a bit tricky. Both offer terrific placement around the sound stage. The instruments are locked into a 3D space and they don't waver at all. This is a huge credit to the Aria Stealth that it hangs with the image of the more expensive Sisfara. There's nearly no smear on either headphone. The difference and where the Sisfara pulls ahead is in the space around the instruments. To me, I can hear more distance and separation between the instruments around the soundstage. Speaking of which, the soundstage. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay. Uh, the Sisfara just has a wider sound stage, and the Aria Stealth Magnet Edition, it's kind of, it's narrower. It's more like along the lines of where the Meze Elite landed in terms of width, whereas the Sisfara has this massive extension that goes way out to the sides. If Especially if you find the right track, it can really blow you away. It's a clear sound stage win for the Sisfara. I introduced this category a few episodes back, and I, I want to talk about it here, and that's instrumentation. You might also call it maybe naturalism or realism, pick your poison, but instruments do sound more lifelike on the Sisfara. You have a better sense of a piano or a horn in the room with you, but that's what, again, what you get for all of that extra money. And before I move on, I, I don't want to imply that the Aria Stealth Magnet Edition has like a bad soundstage or it doesn't sound natural. What I'm saying is that these are areas that the Sisfara dominates, but it's not like the Aria has a small soundstage like say the Utopia or it, it the instruments don't sound natural or something. What I'm saying is that there are areas where you can hear why the Sisfara costs as much as it does. Got it? I Right. And with that, we're going to take a look at sound structure, and that means we are going to be talking bass, and we're going to talk mids, and we're going to talk treble, and I'm going to do it in that order. Ah! Keeping it simple today, and let's start with that bass, and I have an upset. It's the Aria for me. <gasps> Let that hang in the air for a second. 
Okay. The <laughs> The Aria just has more bass presence. Even if it does give up a little bit of naturalness and detail, the Suspara feels like it goes deeper into the sub bass, that presence way down low. But the Aria delivers a more robust bass presence with no real bloat to speak of, and it sounds more musical to me. At reasonable listening volumes, they consistently offer more down low. If bass detail is your thing, yeah, I can see where you can say the Aria takes it. But overall, it's a win for the Aria's stealth. I get more feeling out of the Aria's bass. Now, the mids are where the Sisfara really show their worth, uh, particularly in the upper mids. Because on the wrong track, and I'm going to say this very carefully, on the wrong track, the Aria Stealth Magnet can go a little bit bright, especially when I'm using them at higher volume levels. Now I'm going to give some examples in the music section, but you know, coming a little bit later, where that happened. But I also noticed that the shoutiness can be a little bit amp dependent. Now I didn't notice it as badly on the Hugo TT2 direct out as I did when I was playing them through the Fauna Direct. And what that seemed to indicate to me is that they appreciate lower power than higher power. So go with a lower power to amp setting and you, you'll stay out of that shoutiness. Now, one thing that I noted about the Sisfar on the What's in the Box episode, and I'm going to mention it again here, is that there's a thin timbre on the upper mids on the Sisfara. Now, it's the same on the HE-1000. It's just unique to the high feminine sound prior to the Aria Stealth. It's this little frequency area where something like a tom hit can feel a little bit transparent and thin, like there's not much oomph behind the tom hit. It's this little bit of a thin effect, and that's not present on the stealth that's a good thing right but these did go a little bit shouty here and there on the wrong track with the wrong amp i could make these things kind of bitch at me a little bit but i did want to mention that little upper mid thing because otherwise the mids are as perfect as any headphone i've ever heard and this is far wins the category and then we're gonna finish up with treble, and I like the treble on both of these headphones. Nothing pushes sibilant, nothing's too bright up top. Cymbals crash with clarity and sparkle. You get a little more speed on the Sisfara, and that detail and crispness equates to maybe a little bit more enjoyable experience, but there's nothing I can really point to on the Aria as doing wrong. I can give the edge to the Suspara for that speed, but honestly, it's a push for me. These are both great headphones in the treble. Let's talk some music, and I love talking records and bringing them to each headphone. And I'm going to start with a little Maca, and I'm going to talk about Band on the Run. This is the 1973 masterpiece he recorded in Nigeria with his wife Linda and Denny Lane. Now the studio was a disaster, and Paul and Linda were even robbed at knife point while they were there. Robbers made away with demo tapes and some song lyrics. The result, though, is maybe Paul's strongest post Beale album, and certainly it's in the top two or three. Now on the song 1985, a song which features one of the very first disco beats, listen to the bass line on that track is what disco became. On the Aria Stealth, the song is piercing through the upper mids, where on the Sisfara, things stay beautiful and sordid. And that's a trick the Sisfara can pull off even on the harshest of tracks. They have a way of pulling back when the source gets bright in a way that I haven't heard on any other headphone. It's a remarkable achievement. On a song like Mrs. Vanderbilt, with its acoustic guitar strumming off to the sides and driving bass, I prefer the aria until you get to the guitar solo and things start to grate a little again. Now, of course, the title track is an absolute epic trilogy using every bit of Paul's skill as a songwriter. It's pure McCartney brilliance. The deep tracks on this album, though, are as rewarding as the singles. For me, it's as far a win on Band on the Run. 
Next up, I'm talking Bob Dylan and Blood on the Tracks. Now, there's better dynamic range in this album, which spells good things for the Aria, but it's also an opportunity for a headphone like the Aria to get shouty, particularly on a song like Simple Twist of Fate, where Dylan is hanging these upper register notes out there but that's not the case at all. And you get that better bass presence of the aria. Tangled Up in Blue is just gorgeous. I was right in the middle of that song. The drums have this wonderful slap effect that keep you engaged, like hit here and it hits there. Terrific bass filling in the bottom. On the Sisfara, things feel wider to me on this album. There's more space everywhere. And I certainly appreciated what the Sisfara did to the, to the sound, but Overall, this one's a win for the Arya Stealth. I loved the overall presentation of Dylan on this headphone. And I'm going to finish by going a little bit harder and off the beaten path. And oh, Ronnie Spector just died. Oh, that's horrible news. 78, 60s icon, lead singer of the Ronettes. Oh, man, I be my baby. I loved all of those songs. Such a great singer. Hmm. That's sad. Well, uh, I'm going to finish today with something a little bit harder and something that's a little off the beaten path. Now, generally, I don't like a remake album, but this particular one has such presence and, and vibrancy, and it's executed to perfection. And I'm talking about the Tedeschi Trucks Band live performance of Derek and the Domino's Layla. Now, Susan Tedeschi's vocals are goosebump-inducing soul. She captures the spirit of these songs in a way I haven't heard any other vocalist do. The instrumentation is killer. There are four guitars, including Fish guitarist Trey Anastasio. He's on stage. The organ is played through a Leslie speaker, true to the original. The horn section is amazing and unexpected. There's a remarkable, it's just a remarkable riff on the original. And in a live setting, there's an energy that is added to this album that transcends the original in some ways. You got to listen to uh, Any Day, listen to Keep On Growing. These are killer tracks. The guitar work on Little Wing is a standout. Clapton's Layla is an absolute core album for me. And to put this in that same phrasing, in that same group, is saying something, okay? Check it out, it's a great journey. Uh, I also think it's an album that the Sisfara's speed and separation are more appreciated over the Stealth Magnet. Uh, there's an openness to the Sisfara's presentation that I preferred uh, at the expense of some of the immediacy and that a little bit immersive closed in effect of the Aria. The Sisfara's a win here because I preferred its smoother and sorted approach. All right, so we're getting down to it. And and yes, the Sisfara has clear advantages over the Aria. And which headphone sounds better? Yeah, it's going to be the Sisfara for me. And that really shouldn't surprise anyone. This is a world-class headphone, folks. This is no big shocker. But that's not the entire story here. We have to consider pricing, or at least I do. And to my ears, the Aria Stealth Magnet Edition offers enough of that hi-fi man, planar magnetic magic to not only make them an easy recommendation, but at $1,600, I would say these are a better value than the Sisfara. I think this is hi -Fi Man's strongest offering since the Sisfara, and while the Sisfara is the better overall headphone, and yeah, they win the shootout, I can't say that they justify four times the price tag. Because with the Aria, you get stronger bass, you get a beautiful image, you get stellar dynamics and bass slam, you get terrific musicality, you get a gorgeous sparkle on top of the treble, and it's really remarkably similar to my old HE-1000 V2. And that is high, high praise. The upper mids and the lower treble can get a little bit shouty on the wrong track with the wrong amp power, the wrong amp. Uh, that seems to kind of contribute to this shoutiness, but for the most part, for the most part, and I mean 99% of the time, this sound stays perfectly sorted. hi fi Man has delivered a compelling headphone that at this price should not be overlooked. And I'm going to make one last point, and that's about 
amplification. The Sisfara may be the most difficult headphone on the planet to drive. The quest for perfect amplification for this headphone can run you kilobucks. The Aria is happy with pretty much any amp. In fact, they preferred lower power over headphone amps that really give them the beans. Something like a GSX Mini would be a great pairing or just throw a tube at them and warm them up. A $6,000 headphone, yeah, but you need to add another two on top of that at least to properly drive these. It's another reason I say that the Aria Stealth, this is the better value. This episode was a great journey for me. I got to spend hours and days with two world-class headphones, flipping between them, noting their differences. It was an absolute joy to research. Now, both of these headphones offer their own strengths and very few weaknesses. The Aria Stealth Magnet Edition is a total bargain at $1,600. I think I've made that point pretty clear. Uh, I've heard headphones for $1,000 more that offer less performance than this headphone right here. This is my new benchmark in the bang for the buck category. And I definitely want a pair if I can swing them. Now, every headphone needs to meet this standard if they're going to be priced anywhere around these. To be fair, I haven't auditioned like a ton of headphones in the $1,500 price range. Certainly not open backs, but the Stealth Magnet really brings it, and I can, I can do nothing but thank Audio 46 for the amazing opportunity to audition this headphone. Coming up, I'm going to be getting back into the Odyssey, or do you say Audis? I do. <laughs> the LCD-5. It's a headphone I purchased from Audio 46 that they later discounted. So grateful to them. Now, we're going to break that headphone down, and I'm excited that I'm finally going to get some quality listening time with them. I have a new flagship in-house. I can't wait to reveal that, and I can't wait to hear it myself. It's hard to resist not opening a Kilobuck headphone right now but it's gonna be worth the wait, I promise. I have two more Audio 46 blind what's in the box headphones in-house. Crazy how much is in-house at the moment and ready to go. And I also have a brand new closed back. It's a mid-tier that I'm hoping can make for a good pair of like on-air headphones or I can use them for mixing because it's closed. Now, there's so much in store, so make sure that you're subscribed to the Director's Garage so you don't miss a thing. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the deep dive into the Haifa Minaria Stealth Magnet Editions. Last time I get to say that. And it's comparison to the top of the line Sisfara or do the other thing if you think I totally chunked it. Hey. Can't say I blame you either way, but I'll see you before you know it. Mm -hmm.